we're going to walk around. Matt, you, I'm sure you've done business here at some point. Yes. Try to look at it with a different eye, like you're looking at it for the first time. And you get here, where do you go? To the door. Yeah. What if you're in a wheelchair? It'd be a little challenging. Yeah. So an obvious problem that this building has is accessibility. And it's having a building fully accessible is a way to run a building. It's also the law when you do a certain amount of work in a building, mm -hmm. you're required to put in all, take care of all the ADA issues. Let's take a walk around and see the. Is anything used up in the belfry? <laughs> no. no, no, there's nothing there. And there's nothing intended to go there. Well, I didn't intend to, but I just wondered if it was you. <laughs> so that is obviously one of the entrances. <laughs> yes. But we try to make things a little bit more confusing by having two other entrances that get used. We got the steep front steps out there. So, in an attempt to take care of ADA issues, that's law. You can't open it from the outside. Huh. You have to, you, if you're handicapped, you have to call and let somebody inside know you want to come in, and then this door can be open. Do you want me to go in and open it for you? No, I think that's okay. There's, a, there's an elevator right here, which is not reliable. And that needs to be replaced. But this whole system that we have here, you can see how difficult it is for somebody who may have physical issues to gain entrance to the building. While we're out here, I'm going to take a little diversion and talk about what's underground, what you can't see. Mm -hmm. what? what is underground, you can't see. Oh, yeah. Specifically the septic. Right here? The leach field's right here. Is this the well? Yeah. The well's here. Right. It's not very far away. No, no, it's not. I'm not, I'm not to be honest, I'm not exactly sure where the leach field is. The leach field no longer can meet the needs of the building. If there's a large group, uh, it's problematic. If there's certain times a year, the leach field will back up. So it, it's a mandatory replacement. A lot of things you're going to hear now have to be done at some point. It's less expensive, in my opinion, and you can see the numbers when they are shown, to address everything at once than it is to try to do this piecemeal. The problem is getting enough money to do it all at once. So we've got to take care of ADA, we've got to take care of the leech, we've got to take care of parking, we've got to take care of the well. It's easier to do it all at once as one larger project when you have everything opened up than it is to patch something together use it for a couple of years, and then you have to do something else. What is the deal? So are we like out of ADA compliance? Are we like, are we breaking the law with our, I, I don't, I don't. I it's it's not in compliance. What's that? It's not in compliance. It's not in compliance. Right. The access isn't in compliance. Right. Okay. There's actually a step to get up to it. Exactly, right. yeah. So Americans with Disabilities Act has a certain thing that you have to have in order to allow people in wheelchairs to get into your public yes. spaces and we... They need to have the same ease of entry as anybody else. And there's very strict guidelines. The doors have to have a certain easy movement, certain pounds of pressure. It'll open. We don't have that. There is some good news. Are they going to tear down the whole building? Or? No. No, we don't need to. Don't need to. Where would they have their office when they're doing all the renovations? That's yet to be figured out. So. The initial look, talk with our construction management firm, is that they can keep the building open to the public for certain days. So we could say, for example, if you want access to 
to it's the... It's hard to hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. They can keep the, the building open a certain day. So, for example, if you need access to the vault, that's available. I'm going to make this up. Thursdays from 1 to 5 p.m. And that'll be all worked out ahead of time so that the schedule will be published and a construction company will know that and will accommodate it. And they've already said that they can do that. What is the fire building used for now? There's some things for storage. storage. I don't know I don't know who's, it's, whose stuff is being stored. I couldn't tell you. Is, Town. Is it heated in there? No. no. It's an old school house. <coughs> There is some good news. If I'm not speaking loud enough, please tell me. There is some good news. Structurally, the building's in good shape. If it had not been, that would be a big problem for us. But structurally, we're in good shape. And the roof is in OK condition. The structure of the roof is in very good condition. The shingles, mixed discussion about that right now. The insulation is an issue, right? The whole building needs, needs right. additional insulation. The thermal protection and the uh, energy efficiency of the building is not good. The envelope is not good. It was good for what we had 70 years ago. Solar panels? <laughs> are the um, windows double paned? No. There are storm windows in there. The new one, there will be new windows, either a retrofit of the existing windows or brand new windows that will be at least double, maybe triple pain. Argon filled. Mm -hmm. And they refurbish those buildings and put those windows and put, put storms on them. Yeah. And leave one or two of them that you can, you know, open yeah. more easily. Yeah. Um, or replace those with a double hung. They're, they're somewhat historic and it's actually the can be both less expensive and equally as efficient to refurbish I've existing, well. yeah. Yeah. existing windows than it is to replace them. Yeah. I was really disappointed when I heard that about my house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's not the way I'm going to save energy by replacing a window that I hate and I have to keep those? Well, <laughs> you don't have to, but well, it wasn't a good excuse to get rid of them anyway. <laughs> but in this case, it's But the ones on the bottom. The, the, yeah, the, the bottom floor, that the, that will be reconfigured. Those will all be replaced mm -hmm. with triple pane windows. Well, they have a lot more pressure with the moisture. It's going to be more open now. There's, another, there's several reasons why the cost of this project has, has gone up quite high. One of them is just look at this workspace. This is a very confined workspace for a company to work with. So that's <laughs> going to involve moving things in, so, in smaller quantities. You're going to have to, they're going to have to move and handle a lot of things several times to fit this very small construction site. I was very happy to hear the reaction when somebody suggested that we cut that tree down. As part of the project, Which that is one? one of the most beautiful trees oh, it's in the Vermont. Most beautiful tree. It's bright red. It's gorgeous. That one out there? The maple tree. Somebody in the audience said, the "Cut it down." It's, it's spectacular. Yeah. It has to be cut. No. 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 I've worked on hundreds of projects, and I don't think I've had one that we could look and say, oh, we don't need all that money. We're always looking for more money. And I would like to see, and I think we will see some attempt to restore the historic view of this building. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as much as we'd like to, but it will make a difference. This is a beautiful building. It should, should be something that shows off Middlesex. It's very visible, a lot of traffic there. And what year is it? What year is the building? I should know that, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'll find out for you. you. <laughs> it's in here someplace. <laughs> These stairs are out of compliance. 
<clears throat> They're way too steep. They're way too high. Seven so inches is the minimum, maximum. Right? Seven inches is max. Yes. <clears throat> um, and the depth. Yep. Nine inches, right? Eleven. No. Really? These stairs would go. Yeah. Mm. The entrance would stay, but there would be a different way to get out. Yeah. <clears throat> there would be no entrance here, I think. All the entrance would come down there, and they would make it visually tied together. Mm. This would be the main entrance, though. It would, only, it would be the main entrance? Yeah. Comes around there on the yeah. side. Yeah. On the side. Cool. So would it be built out? No. Um, Let's see if I there got There is a small. Oh, I have. I get through the side plan. There is a very small addition to accommodate the stairwell in the entrance. That's yeah, the there's entrance on either side here. <coughs> hmm. And a lift. And the, and the, the lift elevator. is in there, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if we want to poke our head in there or not. Probably not. Well, why don't we walk downstairs and then go, okay. go in the downstairs to the downstairs to six and then end up sure. upstairs, which is where the public hearing is. Okay. Any questions? happening no. inside there? Correct. Are there stairs or a, the, no. some kind of a ladder or something? Maybe those two geese are down. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can put some vault storage in there. <laughs> Probably. We're going to go inside again. How are we doing on time? Uh, six uh, six fifteen. Okay. So we're in good shape. If you're doing work with the folks working here, then you take a look at the workspaces that they have. It's not very conducive to help helping them serve us. There's a bunch of issues. Uh, for example, the heating system. For example. Um, the vault has radon, tested positive for radon. Tested positive for radon. Yeah. Um, this floor is not insulated and it's very cold. There's no... Come on in, please. There's no breakout area for private work or confidential work. Uh, they make do by somebody will move to a different area. But there is no designated spot that can be held for a small meeting or for, more importantly, or equal importance, people are doing confidential work like in tax records or real estate records. The vault is running out of storage space. And the state puts requirements on each town to hold a, a huge variety of paper in paper form. Uh, you'd think, why can't we put digitize everything? Because the state won't allow it. So we have to, in order to be compliant, we have to have additional vault storage space. We have both, right? They, they digital yes. And, they, but they, they won't correct. allow us to only have digital. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe someday that'll change, but in doing this project, we need to comply with the current law. Um, Office space? Sure. I was going to get to the heating system. Can we interrupt you here for a moment? No, no, or no, distract you? No, you go right ahead. You do what you got to do. 
This is where our treasurer and bookkeeper work, the listers. We have been very busy lately. Oh, there's three, right? There's three listers that sort of huddle around a computer, and the zoning administrator works here as well. There's one computer for three listers? I believe so. Yes. <laughs> this is not a great workspace. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Iker. <laughs> I, I think all I need to do is just have you take a look around mm -hmm. and you can see the problem. And where, what do you do if you have to have a confidential meeting? Yeah. yeah. Just say we're going to have a meeting and we'll shut the door. <laughs> yeah, if we do. I mean, it very rarely happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in my day, a couple questions we just kind of address them kind of here. They're only here a couple times okay. a week, maybe. You know what I mean? And sometimes one day a week. So it's not too bad. Good. Unless okay. somebody comes in and wants to talk specifically about something. I saw you at the BLCT. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head back out this way. We lost somebody. Not surprisingly at all, the electrical system in this building needs to be updated, as does the telecommunications. That's, if you think about how we live our lives over the last, how that's changed over the last 40 years, uh, you can see why. Oh, we can see the vault. Sarah's going to open it. OK. Don't oh, video <laughs> <with it. laughs> so much. Up. <laughs> I want to get that 1870 death letter. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need radon soup coverage? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't breathe. <laughs> don't linger in there. We only got a few minutes left, so let's take a look this way. This is the infamous heating system. It's sideways. It is. It, it's been jury rigged. Oh my gosh. And there are parts in this, that, excuse me, there are parts that are needed that you can no longer get. So this is a highly unreliable heating system. Watch your step here. If you want to come in, just this is the type of thing that you spend a lot of money. It's a money pit and you got nothing to show for it, but to build, you'll be comfortable. We really have no choice. This needs to be replaced. You want to take a look in there? You know, it's so funny. Over the years, over the many years of t having meetings here, um, I just, I mean, I remember one time when I came down here, it was with the Solutions Committee, and um, the um, fire alarm went off, and it was mm -hmm. like at the end of the meeting, and so we kind of ended the meeting, but it was like, beep, 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 beep. And I called Peter Hood, 9 o'clock at night, yeah. right? Chair of the Select Board, Peter, what do I do? It? You know, and he came down, he's like underneath the furnace, you know, and I just feel like they've been like, you know, bailing twine and duct exactly. tape yeah. and, and really, truly thrifty Yankee, you know, they've just <laughs> taken it to every, every length that yeah. it could possibly go. And I just sort of feel like that, uh, and that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> the parts they were using yeah. are no longer available. Are no longer available, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really feel like they, that our slick board has really, really tried to keep costs down by not spending money and eventually it's like there's deferred maintenance that I, I, I don't know I mean I'm not mm -hmm. a I'm certainly not a mechanic but um, I've seen them try really hard and they, I think so the heating system needs the heating system needs to be replaced 
the ventilation system needs to be introduced. We don't have a full ventilation system in this building, uh, which will help everything. Uh, but there are certain minimum ventilation requirements that are not being met. Um, do we have time to go upstairs? Yeah, we can go upstairs. Okay. Anybody want to grab anything from the table? Okay. Um, so it's 6.30 on um, Tuesday, October 22nd. And this is called the Town Hall Bond Informational Hearing at none other than the Middlesex Town Hall. Very appropriate. Very appropriate, yes. Um, don't try to use the bathrooms. No, just kidding. Um, select board. So what happens is um, there's not going to be any action. This is just uh, something that is required by law that we hold this public hearing. Um, and um, the vote is uh, on November 5th. So I'm going to read to you. I have to read to you aloud the entire warning. Okay. So get out your popcorn, everybody, because it's a little long here. Um, special town special meeting. The legal Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. So the voting day is actually called a special meeting, just so you know that the actual date of the elect of the election is called a special meeting. So the legal voters of the town of Middlesex are hereby warned and notified to meet in the Middlesex Town Hall, 5 Church Street, in the town of Middlesex on Tuesday, November 5th, 2024, between 7 o'clock, 7 a.m., in the forenoon at which time the polls will open, and 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m., in the afternoon at which time the polls will close, to vote by Australian ballot upon the following article of business. Article 1 shall general obligation bonds of the town of Middlesex in an amount not to exceed $2,500,000, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants in aid, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of renovating Middlesex Town Hall at an estimated cost of $3,250,000. The legal voters of the town of Middlesex are further warned and notified that an informational hearing will be held in Middlesex Town Hall, 5 Church Street, Middlesex, on Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. for the purpose of explaining the subject proposed renovations to Middlesex Town Hall and the financing thereof, per 17 VSA Section 2680H. The legal voters of the town of Middlesex are further notified that voter qualification, registration, and absentee voting relative to said special meeting shall be as provided in Chapter 9 of Title 16 and Chapters 43, 51, and 55 of Title 17 Vermont, Vermont statutes annotated. The deadline for persons requesting absentee ballots is 5 o'clock p.m. Monday, November 4th, 2024. Voters may contact the town clerk's office with questions regarding voting. Adopted and approved at a meeting of the Middlesex Select Board duly noticed, called and held on October 1st, 2024. Received for record and recorded in the records of the town of Middlesex on October 2nd, 2024. Signed, the Middlesex Select Board. Thank you, Sarah, for pulling all that together because that's a lot of information. Okay, so we're ahead of schedule. At 6.40, it's now 6.34, um, we will have a brief presentation of the bond vote's origin and purpose, including estimated impact of property taxes if the bond passes as warned, and how the Select Board will proceed if it doesn't. Um, and then there's a PowerPoint presentation of proposed town hall renovations. Really, I think what we'll do is actually, um, the, this, the PowerPoint includes some of the stuff in this first section of the, of the sort of history of this. Um, and, and we'll talk as we're going through um, about the, um, what we're proposing and the impact on the property taxes if the bond passes, um, and what we would do if the bond doesn't pass, okay? So, everyone can see this, um, and, my, and I'm sharing my screen, okay? Um, 
So for those of you who may not be aware, back in 2022, we did a um, municipal planning grant to do what was called a capital improvement plan. Um, so at a town hall, at a town meeting, um, before COVID happened, it was the town meeting of the month of COVID, um, folks were um, concerned about a lot of the things that we were bringing up as big ticket items, like graders and repairs and things like that. Um, and so we contracted with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to create what's, what is called a capital improvement plan and a capital um, planning budget, which we use to this day. And we have a budget committee who uses this capital um, budget. And, um, and so we identified that the town hall and the improvements of the town hall were um, a big part of sort of the costs associated with a potential, um, you know, as we were budgeting for the capital um, improvement plan. So in 2023, um, we did another grant funded planning study um, using Vermont integrated architecture um, to help us discover um, various options to um, the town hall, which included renovating the town hall, the existing town hall, um, or building new. And there was a part of that renovation process included like building on to this building. Um, and um, and then um, we, so, so we went ahead and did that and we um, decided that before we could actually bring this to the voters to decide whether or not we would go ahead and bond for um, renovations, we wanted to get a more detailed cost analysis, which was in 2024 at town meeting, a floor, was it this 2024? 23. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. We did a floor vote to um, approve moving forward with the design development phase, um, which was about 65,000, I think, that was approved that included um, VIA doing a more in-depth um, uh, analysis of the actual design and then working with a construction management company that we hired EF Wall to do um, a cost um, analysis, really breaking things down to the very minutia of, of what it would cost. Um, so let me see what the next slide is. Um, so what we already knew and why we did this. Um, Can you close this so we can oh, yep. see that? Oh, sorry, yep. thing sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. I think if I maybe minimize it. Yeah. Okay, okay, is that good? Yeah, sorry. I'm actually, I can probably go like this. Well, I don't know what that is. Okay, yep. Um, so we knew for a long time that there were concerns about the town hall way back when June Lakin was town clerk. It was mentioned in an old town, um, you know, booklet that we get at town hall. I forget what those are called, Sarah. <coughs> the town report that the town hall needs to be renovated, right? <laughs> okay, so then flash forward to 20 years. And really what we've we've only done during that time is, is um, things like painting um, the, the side of the building and just doing some very minor um, repair work on the building as needed. Um, and what we discovered in this phase of working with BIA, we already knew there were excessive radon levels inside the vault, that our vault is overcrowded, it can't take any more space, so we do, our books are required to be in vaults, um, and so, um, so we, we know we needed space for that. Our plumbing um, has a lot of problems, and so it prevents any kind of large gatherings. We sort of had to stop people from using this town hall because of the, because of the plumbing. And sorry, I feel like I'm talking behind you. Um, the biggest, uh, almost like the biggest cost of this is the um, the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, um, work that needs to get done. It's different, you know, I came into this saying, how come this is so expensive, right? Like, how hard is it to put in a couple of, you know, 
I don't know, compatible toilets and some arm things, right? Or, or, or an elevator. There are just a lot of codes that are required for these kinds of buildings um, and, and things that you wouldn't necessarily do in your own home that are required of municipal buildings. So that came in at, at um, that, that is a big cost because right now we are not ADA compatible. Our elevator doesn't um, work most of the time. You can't even get into the elevator if you had a wheelchair. And there are people who literally don't come to meetings because they can't climb the stairs. Um, and so, um, so, so that is obviously a very big concern. Um, the building is old. It was never weatherized. Um, it's drafty. You'll see what we have here in these windows over there. Those were called window dresser windows where we had those installed um, last year um, to the tune of like $600. But that's, you know, helped with some of the draftiness. But that's just, again, a little Band-Aid um, to get us through. Um, big, bigger issue is our heating system can no longer be serviced with replacement parts, so we need a brand new heating system. And per our town, um, our town plan, um, you know, we are moving towards, uh, you know, our reliance on fossil fuel technologies. So it would be a more expensive heating system to replace with, you know, a heat uh, pump uh, heating system. Um, <laughs> Again, our electrical systems are outdated and at capacity, so even like getting those kinds of things, we'd have to get some upgrades with our electricity. And then overall, there's just limited space for offices, storage, and small gatherings. We have this big open space here, um, but it's not, a very, uh, it's not a very useful space. Here are some pictures that just kind of show you where we're at. Like on the left there, you'll see um, that's like a you know, frost heaves, so like someone has to, that's to get into an elevator. You have to actually open the door to get into the elevator. So if you were someone in a wheelchair, you could not get in on your own. You would need someone to come out and help you um, get in and, and push you in to do that if the elevator were working. Um, there's our um, outdated heating system in the me in the middle there, um, just our downstairs where we used to meet um, for meetings um, before COVID. Um, and you know, just some you know, we can you can tell we have older windows. Um, so these are just a few you know little uh, sections um, to to sort of show the outline of the of the town hall. Um, so when we did the renovation planning, um, we you know determined that it would meet all the requirements and the code issues to do a renovation. Um, and that building new would still cost more, even with selling the existing building, and determining also where to put, you know, a new building would be potentially tricky, because we we do want to keep it, also per the town plan, in the village, um, and um, we did decide not to do an addition because we decided that we really didn't need it. So we, as a planning commission, and committee and when I say we I'm referring to Sandy Levine here and Dave Megida and myself and and Sarah and um, the staff had a lot of input as well because they are the ones using the building so Dorinda Cheryl the folks that are in here um, were a part of the, the process as well um, the other thing about the renovation was that um, when you're renovating buildings, um, there are funds that are available for renovation versus building new, so grants that are available. Um, and, you know, there was, um, let me see, what's the next slide? Okay, so, so these are, um, these are the pictures um, of how it would be. So, a lot of the cost um, that has come in is to um, earthing, um, moving earth for um, what you see around the building, which is the um, driveway and accessibility. And the handicapped accessibility requires some major earth movement um, that, that is expensive. So that's like what I was saying. When you think about your house, you're not thinking about necessarily those things. But on this, in order to make it compliant, like you have to have, you know, certain ways of getting into the building. So, um, so this includes uh, parking up front as well as parking out back. Um, the handicapped access is actually under the um, where the spire is now. So your elevator would be over here now. Right now, it's it's over there. Um, so it's different altogether. 
these are obviously really hard to see, um, but um, but what this what this space does, um, especially um, so like. So over here, so this is our upstairs right here. So what it does is the handicap accessibility is over here. And then it has some <coughs> rooms. So this, this area here, it wouldn't, the footprint wouldn't change, but it, this would be smaller, but a space for about 40 people. There would be some private space for um, like listers and people to do their work up here, town records kind of work. Um, over here, there's like a tiny little sort of kitchenette thing, um, bathroom, some storage space. I forget what's entirely over here, um, Dave. Display. Oh, right, a display. There's so, so the Historical Society, there would be some displays for Historical Society um, to, you know, put some stuff up um, and, you know, adorn some of the walls. Um, down here, it, the, the footprint is, is laid out differently. There's two vaults, so we keep the same vault, but we put in another vault. Where's that second vault, um, Dave? All the way to the left and back. Okay, somewhere up here? Nope, yeah, the opposite direction. There. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right in there. Um, so there's a second vault there. Um, so is our current vault? Right where your finger was. Right up here? No, nope, right, right here. Over, yep. But at the end, yeah, that's our vault. Current vault. Okay, sorry. Let me see. So, um, and it gives a little bit more protection for the town, um, for, the, for the town clerk. There's. Um, there's, it's more of a windowed situation, I think, for, um, for the town clerk. Um, and, and it uses, essentially, um, it, it doesn't expand. Um, if anything, it might slightly shrink on the inside because of the insulation, right? Bringing the walls in a little bit, was that going to happen? Yeah, it's just a few yeah. inches. Yeah, just a few inches. Um, so, Um, so I'll back up a little bit to talk more about the um, some of the, the 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 funding. So we talked about um, the impact on property taxes if the bond passes, um, and how the select board would proceed if it doesn't. So um, this bond, we had decided to do this bond now because there was some big federal monies that were available. Um, and as you know, nothing gets cheaper, right? So the longer we wait, the more everything costs. Like there's, there's no scenario where anything gets cheaper. That being said, we felt like this was the time to move forward with a bond because there was some money that was some big ticket money that we could apply for that was specifically for renovations, which was called the Municipal Energy Resilience Program, MERP. MERP money um, was um, advertised to be this great solution for like older buildings like ours to be able to upgrade our heating and weatherization um, systems. Um, and there was a whole process, it's been in the works for two years um, where we applied, you know, for this an, an sort of a um, initial startup grant of four thousand dollars, that was just, you know, to start getting your town more interested in energy efficiencies and alternatives, um, and then it also um, included, finally, um, a energy assessment of the municipal building. So we applied uh, months and months ago for. Um, our three buildings to get assessed, the town garage, the town hall, and the fire station. They chose two buildings. They, they, they agreed to do two buildings. So they did this building and they did the fire station because the fire station also needs a new heating system. Um, and so, and just to give some context, this grant was supposed to be available well over a year ago to apply for, but short staffing with the state, um, an inability to really move that grant forward was um, why this was delayed for the state to, to offer this grant. So we got back our energy assessments and 
the next day, we literally get an email that says, we're sorry, but you can't apply for this because you come from a town that is not considered energy, high enough energy burden. And what that means is people who live in this town are not low income enough for us to qualify to apply for this grant. Well, as you can imagine, we were all very upset by this news because they said we only have 3 million, 3.5 million or something like that to give out and we are gonna give it out to the highest energy burden towns. So we said, well, there it goes. By this time, we literally, the day we found out was the day we had it already ready to warn. It was already warned. So there was nothing we could do. We couldn't turn around and say, we can't do this. It was already done. Meanwhile, literally like a week before the grant is due, because of pressure from people like me and other towns, they came back and they said, okay, you can apply, but you're gonna get a low score for your, because it's a rubric that they score and you get points for certain parts of your grant. They said you can, you'll get, a, you, you'll get probably zero for being an energy burden town because we don't have an energy burden. So I went ahead and I applied for the full over 500,000 that I applied for. Um, and they told us we would know by the 18th, which I knew was not gonna actually happen, which is why we kept this meeting as far out as we possibly could, which is the 22nd, and I will know on Friday. Maybe. So, yeah, maybe. No, they, I, and I even asked today, I asked Sam Lash, I said, Sam, do you have any inside information because I have a meeting tonight? And she said, I have none, and you, you know, I'm meeting with them today, but I would say, don't count on anything until Friday. So the good news about this is that because we had worked with VIA, we had a stellar application because we had every dollar value that we needed. We had our report and we had real numbers to be able to provide of what things would cost. So I feel like our grant was as good as it possibly could be. Um, and that other towns, believe it or not, many towns hadn't even gotten their energy assessment to be able to make any kind of real guess, right? And the, you know, the planning commissions were trying to support them, but if we can get points for having a good application, I know we'll get points for that. So I have a slight hope that we will get something. I do not think it's gonna be the full 500, but I don't know. Um, I do know that they have to get rid of this money. And so they may not have gotten enough applications, so maybe we'll get the whole amount, maybe we'll get nothing. I, I cannot even begin to guess. Um, but if we do, it'll be crucial for us to have this bond because if we don't, if the bond doesn't pass and we get, let's say 500,000, there are things that we may not be able to do because we don't have enough money to do it the way that we had planned on doing it, right? Um, so, because some of the money that I applied for sort of counts on something else being done to get that done, like new electrical panel, right? You might not be able to get a whole heat pump here without upgrading the electrical panels, right? So, um, and I, and no matter what, by the end of November, we have to commit to that money. We have to say, yes, we're gonna take it or no, we're not. And this is sort of once in probably my lifetime's opportunity for this kind of, of big money. Um, so um, the, um, we did then, um, and I'll back up again, when we first, met with VIA and had their preliminary estimate, it came in around two and a half million, right? Or 2.2 million, Sandy, something like that. When EF Wall came in to do their assessment a year later, so VIA has someone like EF Wall to do this. So, so they actually had a spreadsheet as well saying it's gonna cost this much to do this and this much to do that and this much to do this, right? EF Wall did a side-by-side -side comparison and came in much higher than the original VIA assessment of the person that they use. And again, it was a year later and costs go up, right? 
So I literally, when I looked at it, I said, I can't accept this. Like, I can't accept three and a half million dollars, right? Um, and so we went back to BIA and to um, EF Wall did another sort of cost cutting, um, which cut all manner of things. You're all welcome to see that spreadsheet, but it was about $700,000 worth of cuts that they put into this, um, in, into this uh, assessment, this estimate. Um, but even still, um, the you know there are these costs that EF Wall doesn't include, like where are we going to put Sarah for six months while this is being done, right? Um, so 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 when we came up with it before the cuts, that three and a half um, million, it wasn't quite three and a half. I think it was like three point two million um, included everything. It included like. Sarah being displaced and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and contingency costs. I don't know the term that I should be using. But yeah. Um, so if the bond passes, um, we, will, we will do, there are other grants that are available that I, that I applied for once and they came back and said, you're not ready for it because you don't have any other money, right? Like we can't, we're not gonna give you this until we know that there's, you have other things allocated, right? And that's like for ADA. So there's some ADA grants that are available. Actually, this MERP grant that we applied for required us to apply a certain percentage toward ADA. So that did include some ADA work. Um, and, um, but, the and we also expect to do some private fundraising, like townwide fundraising. In fact, Jan just offered her barn for a big townwide party, Ooh, right? That great. So um, that would be probably next summer. Um, so um, so we are we will do everything we can to apply for every funding that is out there. And unfortunately, there's not tons, right? The MERP is what we were really counting on, and that's a who knows what. Um, the, there's there's a there's a there's an ADA grant that we can apply for. There's something called the Paul Brun um, Brun um, grant that we can apply for. Um, but again, we couldn't really start to apply for these things until we had some sense of whether or not the bulk of it would be funded through a bond. Um, so this is up to two and a half million dollars. So that doesn't mean we go out, run out and get a two and a half million dollar loan. It just allows us to borrow up to two million. We don't start that borrowing. So there's a whole, I could actually probably share that spreadsheet maybe that I sent with you, Sandy. Um, for the the cost, like what it looks like. I, I printed out the oh, did you? estimated cost. Oh, okay. So you have that, yeah. Or a two and a half million dollar bond, and sort of what the tax implication okay. would be. Can I see one? Yeah. Thanks. There's a two million. Okay. And the reason it's two uh, and two and a half is like maybe we only need to borrow two million dollars right. by the time we actually go forward with the borrowing. Right. Because you only have just one copy. No, I have a few copies. Okay, so the way, and so this is another thing to educate people on, is that um, we also have a fire station bond right now that is a that has a probably another five years, I think, 2030. 2030. So that's like yeah, five years starting in 2025. So, um, so there will be a little over like so when when you do these bonds um and you can do them a little bit differently how you pay um but um you basically pay your first payment is an interest payment in year 2025 and that's like twenty five thousand dollars if it's a 2.5 million bond it's twenty thousand if it's a two million dollar bond. Um, 
The interest rates went down from the last time I did it. I think it's 4.17. Do you remember, Cheryl, what the interest rate was? I don't remember. Okay. Um, it's in the four something range for, for a municipal bond. Um, and then the second year is two, in, two um, interest, bigger interest payments for a total of 80,000. And then the, th or 100,000 if it's 2.5. And then the third year is when you start to do your principal and your interest. Um, and this is like a, this looks like a 30-year um, bond. Yeah, a 30-year bond. And so for a house, and so this is kind of how it works too with interest your principal remains the same, but your interest goes down every year. So your payment slightly goes down every year. But if your house is valued at three hundred thousand, um, your highest payment on a two and a half million dollar bond towards your taxes would be two hundred and fifteen dollars, and then it goes down from there each year. Um, to the lowest of like a hundred. If we're a two million dollar bond at three hundred thousand, so if your house is actually assessed at six hundred thousand, you double that, right? Or you, or you add on whatever hundred thousand is. Um, so that would be the implication to your taxes. Um, if the bond doesn't pass. We still have a lot of problems with the town hall. The town hall problems don't go away, right? So we, I think what we do next depends on it, whether or not we get MERP, if we get anything from MERP. And it could be that we also come back again in March and ask again maybe educate people more or come up with a different plan um, for this. Because this renovation that VIA has makes this building a really welcoming, nice building that will last beyond all of us in this room, right? I mean, it will be a modern, renovated, but you know, up to code, weatherized building um, that serves the purpose of the townspeople, our municipal officers, the community. And it doesn't really do that now. We know that, right? Like we're, no one's clamoring to come here and have meetings because this is such a nice spot and you can look at, you know, historical society things. So. But there could be something in between, right? It could be that we're just fixing what has had a lot of deferred maintenance, maybe weatherizing it if we get some weatherization money. Um, so, you know, I think if you, Dave or Sandy, have other thoughts on what would happen if it doesn't pass, um, I think the the other thing too is that if we if if we decide that this town hall is is I mean voting on this decides whether or not we think this town hall is worth keeping is really what it boils down to right and so the question is what would we do if we don't have this town hall because you know it is a part of our community and um And it needs repairs. And this is a cost and it's not going to get cheaper. It's really what it boils down to. So any more comments from the committee before we open it up to questions? Did I miss anything? No. OK. Um, I will stop. Oh, what's, is there any more? No, that's it. OK, I will stop sharing in case there's anyone on Zoom. Um, Are there questions from the, the audience about this? Yes, Dorinda. I don't have questions, but one thing that has not been addressed is how we stand financially. Mm. And I think that is a very 
very serious problem. I've worked in this town hall for many years. I agree 100% we need this renovate, we need repairs. I don't know if the renovation needs to be done to the extent that, you know, there's a difference between necessary and what we would really like. But with that said, we also have, which you brought up, is all these other buildings in town that are in need of repair. What happens if we go into debt for two, two and a half million dollars, and we still have to repair these other buildings? Mm -hmm. We still have to put in heating systems. Um, we started this process before not just the first flood, but we've been through two floods mm -hmm. since this all started. Um, currently, we have $850,000 in debt service, which does, has nothing to do with the flood. That's just where we sit as of today. Um, do you mean like trucks? And, and trucks, the, the fire, fire station, station yeah. whatever. So we're paying on that. Um, the total for the 23 flood came in at $6,125,000. Um, we've only received 530000 the FEMA will pay 90%. The state says they're going to cover 2.5%, but that still leaves $460,000 plus interest that the town people will need to cover. For 2023 or 2024? 2023. I thought 2023 was covered. No. Nope. Nope. Hmm. So then we've only received a few invoices for 2024. But we best, based on what we've been receiving to date, it looks like this flood's going to come in at 3.75 to 4 million. And that's only going to be covered at 75 percent. And nowhere has the state said they're going to contribute anything on that one. So that could leave potentially another 750,000 to a million dollars in debt. Um, in order to pay the vendors, we have to keep borrowing. We've already borrowed the first full $3 million. Mm -hmm. We're now applied for a second $3.5 million. So there's six and a half, potentially $6.5 million now. We will get FEMA money to pay it off, but essentially you're still looking at, I don't know, go back here, you're looking at a million and a half dollars potentially that we're going to be holding the bag on. We've started the budget process. Health insurance is up 24% this year. All of our office supplies have more than doubled. Um, it just is becoming, you know, the increases to the town operating budgets are out of control. You're going to see a double digit again this year, I think, in the town budget. You're also going to see it with the school. There, so I don't know where you think this is going to stop with how taxpayers can pay this. Um, I'm all for the renovation, but we can't afford it. And you know, I personally live on Social Security. And I can tell you my 2.5% isn't going to cover it. And we need to stop and think about these other people that just can't afford $215 on their taxes because none of this town stuff is income sensitive. So it doesn't go by what your income is that you get your state payment. And I just think we're asking people, you know, to carry a terrible burden here. Um, I think if this was delayed, that it would allow time for FEMA funds to be received. It would put us in a better cash flow position. Um, I think that our, some of our current debt service would be over and we could um, bond interest rates. I mean, they already cut the federal rate, borrowing rate. You may see interest rates come down. You're going to see more. I think there's going to continue to be more grants out there for people. Um, 
I just think, you know, if we want to raise funds towards the building, let's do it in advance and put it in the bank and make money on it instead of paying interest on it. Um, I just think that we're asking an awful lot of these people, and the committees worked very hard on this, and we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I think we need to really think about how people can afford to live here and enjoy the new building. Thank you, Dorinda. Dorinda is absolutely right. This comes at probably one of the worst times with two floods um, coming through. Um, I do believe, though, I just want to um, ask a clarifying question about the FEMA for 2024, is that my understanding from um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is because we've done our um, due diligence, all of our due diligence, that brings it down to 7%. 7.5% 7 .5 is what our town, yes, well, I think what Dorinda That's is referring to is that the, set, the, the state has not promised. The reason is FEMA is not reimbursing us at 90%, correct? Reimbur FEMA is reimbursing us at 70, 75%. But, but this year, like, we're getting 90% right. for a 23 flood. But we're not going to get 90%. Oh, I know that. Yes. Like, right. So that's where the gap is. But it's is. not 25% that we owe. <clears throat> I thought that I understood you to say we would owe 25%. I don't For think For a 24 that. flood, because I, I don't, I don't, don't so, believe, though. have they come, it, I haven't heard anything about it. The hazard mitigation stuff that we've been doing with Lincoln and yes, with that Rupert. Is. So that's that's a state hazard mitigation, so that our 25%, we've done all the things to make right. it now 7.5. That was only, but the state was originally kicking in 10% for the, the, the 23. And I don't think the state's doing that. There's, nothing's been said on that. So that's what was bringing okay. it down to 7.5%. But that's not part of the 24 flood. So we still might get the hazard I mitigation it was down to 2 portion. percent on the 2024 flood. I really did. I thought it had gotten all the way down. No. Only 7.5% for you know, 2023. We can, we can find, we can yeah, we can find that out. And they may, and they may not actually have the answer, it may be something that gets added in. Um, so yes, I mean, she's absolutely right. Like there are other costs that are going to be incurred, um, for the, the flood, um, the, and we're not the only town who has to do this. I think that, um, the, the Vermont bond bank does offer towns opportunities to bond that remaining amount for FEMA because people don't have it in their budgets to put that in there. They can't put in, you know, an extra you know, 500,000 that they owe um, in their budget. Um, so I think that that is, a, I mean, she makes a very valid point. And this is just not, this comes at, you know, this whole process takes literally two years to get to where we are. And we had a flood each year, right? So it's, it's um, yeah, it's tough. Um, but again, I don't see this going down in price anytime soon. I, I mean, I just, maybe you're right with the interest. There's a possibility that the interest rates could go down. They already did from the first time I got a bond um, estimate, which was a year ago. It's gone down by at least maybe a half a percent um, from that. And it could go down. I mean, it, we, and so this also, you guys, is not, this is voter approval for a bond. This isn't getting the bond. So it could, you know, if this gets approved, the bond we may get in the spring um, is how it works. There's two phases in the in the calendar year. One is a winter and one is a or one is a spring and one is a fall bond. So this would be a spring bond and whatever that prevailing rate is for that. Other questions? My opinion, oh. my opinion on the whole thing is should be, are we going to do some tearing things down? Tear down. So you're going to walk up the steps. Nothing worse. At night when you go to the library, you just walk you know, on the flat ground, you're in there at night and bright. You've got a dungeon to get downstairs. You're not going to change that dungeon. It's still going to be downstairs. Mm -hmm. And you've got a building that you're going to tear all down here. You're going to take sheetrock off, the insulator probably, and ceiling. You're going to tear up the floor. You don't want to keep this. I mean, you're starting over in a way. Do you want to speak to that, Dave, a little bit about that, the, the costs of that kind of what he's referring to, which is basically like raise this building and build a new one? We did look at that. We looked at what well, was one of the first things that the board asked mm -hmm. us to do was look at 
A new station sense. alert has arrived. Renovation with an addition or new? Renovation with an addition we decided was not necessary. So that got us down to two things that have priced out. The renovation you see proposed today versus new construction somewhere. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we assume it's going to be Middlesex property. We're not going to go out and buy new property. And it came out about $550,000 more expensive than renovated. Okay, you're not getting any space. And nowadays, all the stuff, you need more and more help to do all the, all the bookwork and stuff that come into the state. And you're going to probably maybe have a full time manager to manage the town. Who knows? Okay. And you're doing it in the same thing I can spend a million dollars for. We got schools that might be empty in another five years because they might build a century school. That would be a beautiful place. Who cares? What we got in Middle Tech Village? We got Route 2, Interstate, the river, and the, the nothing in the you know, lower town. We need to make a new pretty store out of town. Uh, it just seemed like a waste of money. Thank you. When you have, I wouldn't take up a car with $300,000 and put other 100000 in it. Because you took a lot of joy with Hindi work on it. What is your name, sir? David. David. Quill. Oh, oh, you're. Are you? Is he doing this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in town for a few years. I've been here. Oh, I've never met many him. Many times. <laughs> now you're up. Oh, 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 David. So sweet. Um, I love him. Used just renovated town hall downstairs with using donated and pilfered stuff from Necky. Oh, nice. Build us a whole shell. Beautiful counter. That was him? Oh, and it's Charlie? And my, yeah, my husband. So, oh, that's nice. So you can do things. Yeah. That was that cost $500, that renovation. Um, for I will dollars. say, I believe the renovation sort of digs out that, and it makes it a little bit less like a dungeon. It's a really a dungeon. It's a net wall. And like having work, like have your baby in a snap baby and go live in it. Um, anyone else have some comments or questions? <laughs> no? Okay, anyone on the line? On the line. On Nobody's the computer. Here. Actually, Nobody's we here. lost one. Okay. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> So I think he turned in to see David. <laughs> I think he turned in to see David. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so if there aren't any questions, I think that this adjourns the meeting of the public meeting at um, 7.15 p.m. Did I cover everything on the agenda? I think you did a really good job. Yep, Q&A and adjournment. Oh, I even, I even adjourned us early. Good job. Yay! Thank you all for coming.